2022 Brookhaven Borough Council meeting will now be called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment, please. The deceased residents for the month of January 2022. Catherine Castagna. Ruth Hensley, Dorothy Wilmoth, Edward Imbrogno, William Davies. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Wilbert, have some roll call, please. Yes, sir. Uh, roll call, uh, Mr. Heller. Present. Mrs. Fuchs. Here. Mrs. Heller? Here. Mayor Leslie? Here. Mr. Vasquez is absent and at work. Um, Ms. Sawicki? Present. Mr. Pappas? Here. Mr. Gilroy? Present. Mr. Wills? Here. Mr. Catan? Here. Mr. Wilbert's here. Mrs. Boyle? Here. Present. Chief Montella? Here. Chief Vice? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, sir. Chief Vice? Uh, good evening. I'm going to ask <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jackson if you would come up here to the center for us. Hey, Kev. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Stay right over here with us. Mike, fix the podium. It's, it's off kilter. How are you, sir? Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to knock it on the floor. No. Right, so, tonight's a special night for us. Um, Thank you for coming. We're here to um, present our Hope for Haley check from our No Shave November. Um, and I'd start by saying that I first met the Jacksons uh, prior to being sworn in as chief at the Hope for Haley car show. Um, immediately when I met them, I knew that I liked them, and I promised it had nothing to do with the fact that Christine went to my alma mater, which is Cardinal <laughs> O'Hara High School. I swear it had nothing to do with that. Um, but seriously, they're amazing people, and I truly admire their strength, resilience, determination, and dedication. Losing a child has to be the most devastating thing anyone can go through, and both of you somehow found the strength to continue on. But you don't just continue on, you're making a difference. You're helping many in need, and there is no way to quantify just how many you have helped. So to both of you, we all say thank you. When I began having the conversation with our officers about participating in No Shave November, the decision was easy and clear for us. We wanted to raise money and awareness for Hope for Haley. Hope for Haley strives to bring awareness and to break the stigma for mental health. Their goal is to educate the community by teaching others what signs to look for, what to do in crisis, and where to find resources. They also provide resources for those struggling with mental health issues and those who may be currently struggling in silence. The Jacksons have become special friends of our department and we want to support them in every way possible. We have no doubt that Haley is proud of you and what you both are doing. Uh, I also want to thank Mayor Leslie and all of council for supporting our efforts during No Shave November. I also want to thank everyone that has supported us by donating and purchasing our clothing items in our patch. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. I also thank Officer Johnston as he handled most of the merchandising and getting everything out there. Um, it's been <laughs> Quite a, a challenge, I can say that for sure. Um, to all of our officers, I say thank you for your help and support. We definitely had some fun admiring our beard growth, and well, some of us tried. <laughs> um, so, with that said, um, Mayor, would you come down and we'll present them with their check? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, none of the officers, other than Officer Johnston, and I have seen this. So. I'll let you see it first. So <laughs> we raised four thousand six hundred dollars for Hope for Him. <laughs> no one gets it first. <laughs> 
So Officer Johnson is actually on a call, so unfortunately he's not here right this time. Are you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, Ms. Ford. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Coburn Elementary School report, uh, our health and safety, PDSD staff and students continue to follow the health and safety guidelines set by the CDC with regard to masking, physical distancing, and sanitizing. Um, the district data is showing improvement as a result of the continued mitigation efforts. As of 2-4-22, district-wide totals are down to 10 positives and 13 quarantines. That was as, as of 2-4, and you know, we're expecting them to continue to decline. <clears throat> Uh, this month, the Coburn Elementary Student Council collected donations for the Providence Animal Center. Collection barrels and boxes were overflowing with pet supplies. Everything was packed and delivered to the animal hospital. Thank you to all who were able to donate to this worthy cause. Um, the students celebrated uh, Kindness Challenge Week at the end of January. Uh, Coburn participated in this last month with the focus, of course, on kindness with family, friends, community, and self. Students participated in activities such as read-alouds, curated videos, and discussion and class meetings. Students learned strategies and created cards and posters to promote kindness throughout the school and community. <clears throat> Cougar Pride is also uh, another area in our school uh, where we focus on school climate. Uh, our students have an opportunity daily to earn Cougar coins and, and Pride Paws at the end of each week. We do drawings for our students. Um, our kids that earn a Pride Paw uh, have an opportunity to uh, be put into a drawing and uh, have a reward. We do this quarterly and it's usually a big reward. They had a fun snowflake party this month 
Again, um, all of this is because they are demonstrating COBRA and core values, being respectful, responsible, and ready. We also celebrated our school nurse uh, this month. The COBRA and staff surprised uh, Nurse Gold with a celebration of thanks. The staff wanted to show their appreciation to Nurse Gold for her hard work and commitment to students and staff and keeping everyone safe during this very challenging time. And she was gifted a well-deserved spa day. Um, so looking ahead to February, we have a lot of spirit days planned that I'll report out on. Kids Heart Challenge is coming up, which is scheduled for the week of February 21st. Of course, all donations benefit the American Heart Association. We are planning an assembly in collaboration with the Brookhaven Police Department, which we're looking forward to, very excited. Um, it'll be one of our first assemblies that we're having in person with our students. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, Coburn Student Council is collecting bingo prizes for Fair Acres until February 25th. <laughs> And then uh, our, of course, the Friday, February 18th, there's no school for students due to teacher and service. And then of course, we will be closed in observance of President's Day on February 21st. And again, we have a lot happening all the time. If you take a look at our Twitter account or follow us on Twitter, you'll see all the fun activities that are happening in different classrooms. Thank you, Ms. Ford. You're welcome. Mrs. Ford, if you have anything you want me to put on our website, just send it to me, email it oh, to me. Oh, awesome. More than happy to do it. Oh, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thanks. We'll open the first public discussion session. Is there anyone that would like to speak for public discussion? Please approach the <clears throat> podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Um, Sean McKenna, 40 book. And address? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still taken aback by all that. So. Your street's fine. Madison Drive. On a watch list or something. Like that. Yeah. Well, you all know where I live, but um, I, I don't have any big speech prepared. I just, I just wanted to come up here as a resident and say thank you to everybody who had a hand in doing what they did here, especially you know, Chief Vice and his men. Really, um, just really blew me away. And not just this, but everything since day one, you know, when we did the ride. Acting Chief Zebley gave us the escort, and we were able to stage here, helping us, you know, have the first show, which was tremendously successful. <laughs> um, the second ride, which again, Chief Vice come, came in on his Sunday off and helped us with that, and just, just, I just, I can't, I can't say enough good things about this town. When you and I started the Hometown Hero program, I thought to him, and just. Everything that happened with that, I thought to myself, I'm never going to be more proud of this town than I am now. I was wrong. Because with all this, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm more proud of this town than I ever have been. And it's the greatest town in the nation. I don't care what anybody says, you know. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else for public discussion? Please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, evening Scott sir. Scott Kropinski, 5200 Hilltop Drive. Uh, two things tonight. Uh, first and most important, I want to thank Chief Vice for the help of what's been going on in Hilltop. I've been a longtime resident of not only Brookhaven, but of Hilltop, going back into the 80s. And we've had our issues, but he has really taken us under his wing and um, gone above and beyond and helped clean up some lingering long-term problems. Thank you and all your men for that. I very much appreciate it. And <laughs> number two, um, we have a small issue on Hilltop Drive with a stop sign at the top of the, where you go to shop right down that hill. Yeah, I know where it is. So you have two stop signs, but a three-way intersection. There's no stop sign coming out of Hilltop to Edgemont Avenue, but there's one going in from Edgemont Avenue to Hilltop and up the hill from ShopRite to there. Okay. So sometimes when you're, I, I don't think people realize it's only a two-way stop sign, not a three-way stop sign. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're leaving Hilltop and somebody's turning in front of you or you're turning down the hill, People don't realize you don't have a stop sign. 
and I've almost gotten hit a couple times over the last six months, mm -hmm. and I've seen a few others. So I don't know if we can put a third stop sign in there or maybe put that it's only a two-way stop sign or, I mean, preferably I think a third stop sign would be the way to go. We can look Because I don't think anybody would read, oh, two-way stop sign if somebody else doesn't have a sign. Yeah, we can look into it. Just trying to avoid an accident at the top of the hill there because mm -hmm. it's pretty busy sometimes. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yep. Okay, that's it. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Is there anyone else for public discussion? First public discussion session is closed. Chief Vice. For the month of January, we had a total of 872 CAD assignments. Uh, so it was, again, a busy month for us. Uh, we seem to be stuck in that <coughs> busy months lately, but uh, we'll get through it. So just a few of the major calls. We had eight thefts, one vandalism, four fraud, one sex offense, five DUIs, two public drunkenness, four disorderly conduct, one narcotics investigation, eight animal complaints, two solicitor complaints, 27 suspicious conditions, three harassment complaints, 18 disturbances or domestic disputes, 92 medical assists, one mental health response, 35 assist other departments, 11 alarms, 25 crashes, and 16 hazardous conditions or assist motorist calls. Uh, in total for the month, we had 34 adult arrests, 98 citations were issued, two parking violations, and 114 warnings were issued. Um, for the month, I received a thank you letter for Officer Martin from Haverford Township Police for the time he assisted them with covering their township. Uh, I also received a thank you from Parkside Police Department for Officer Subers and Officer Kelso. Uh, they assisted them with the theft investigation where they took some people into custody. Uh, just a couple of quick other things. Accreditation is still moving along. Um, I'm putting new policies in place each, almost each and every day. It seems at this point we're, we're really rolling along, so I'm very happy with the progress. It's a lot of work, but it's paying off, so I'm very happy. As far as training for the month, we have all now transitioned to our new firearms, and every one of us have qualified with the new firearms. Um, it's, I think every one of us would say that we're very pleased with uh, making the change and just staying up on top of technology and, and where we are, so we're, we're very happy with that. In addition, Officer Wetton attended monthly SWAT training. Uh, Detective Havoc, Officers Kelso and Eastman attended training through street cop training. Um, and again, I just really want to say thank you to our officers for their tremendous support for No Shave November. Again, you can see it was a huge success. I think one that we were all pretty much shocked by. Um, so I can't say thank you enough. Um, most everyone is aware at this point that our police department has been very active and aggressively addressing issues that need to be addressed in the borough. I'll never shy away from something if, if there's things that are out there that have to be addressed. Uh, we've had several very good arrests recently. and We're making progress in making our community safer for each and every one of us. But I do want to let you know that none of this would be possible without the tireless efforts of our officers on the street each and every day. That's where it begins, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be having the success that we are. So I, I congratulate them on all their hard work because it is clearly paying off. Um, we'll continue our efforts, and I want to make it abundantly clear. I say it a thousand times. I'll probably say it a thousand again. If you come into our borough and you commit a crime, we're going to do everything we can to hold you accountable. And I stand behind that. Um, so that is the end of my report. Can you give us a quick uh, rundown on LiveScan since we'll be entertaining it tonight? Yep. So LiveScan is a, it's basically a, a system that's in place for processing, for photographing and processing um, those that are arrested. It's a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, and matter of fact, under our accreditation process, you have to have a certain percentage um, your percentage has to be above 90%, um, and we're not quite there yet. Uh, but we don't have a lot of control over that because we do not have live scan as we, you know, as we are presently. We rely on other agencies to do it for us. Um, so it's just basically a system that ties into the state police system. Um, if, in, if we were able to get live scan, it would tremendously take, cut the time that our officers are off the street when an arrest is made um, significantly because we would be doing everything in-house. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's what it comes down to. Thank you, sir. Yep. Chief, was our department involved in the arrest of the gentleman uh, Hilltop uh, concerning the hit and run accident that occurred on Chichester Avenue? 
We were involved. Um, I received a call Friday night from CID asking if we would offer assistance, and obviously anybody that knows me knows I'm not going to say no. Um, so I came in. Um, Officer Eastman was working, so I pulled him with me. We went to the scene. Um, and we kind of formed our plan, what we were going to do, and then ultimately went up to Hilltop where we made contact with the, the operator of the vehicle. So yes, we were involved. That accident happened down the street from my office, so that uh, is one that is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah it was very sad and tragic. Uh, the the gentleman that was killed was well known to their community, yeah. so it was it was very sad. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chief Montella. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Mr. President. <laughs> For Cave and Fire Company's January 2022 fire report. No house fires or fire incidents in the borough. 24 non-fire incidents in the borough. 23 mutual aid, six drills for a total of 53 for the month. We had no loss on structure or contents in the borough for the month. We had one firefighter injury involving a house fire in Middletown. We had a fall from a ladder. Um, no civilian injuries. Our manpower was 53 calls, average of 13 firefighters. We were in service for man out personnel hours of 1,099 for the month. Training six sessions, 24 average firefighters, 236 hours of training log for the month. We had a following incidents in the borough. We had a fuel spill at the Wawa. We had a gas leak on Morris Avenue. We had a pedestrian struck at the 3300 block of Edgemont Avenue. And during the snowstorm, the fire department assisted the ambulance 11 times. Um, our Cave and Fire Company assisted the uh, Chester Fire Department on a cover up while uh, they operated a working fire at Kimberly Clark. We assisted Aston Township on an accident at Bridgewater Road during the snowstorm at the bridge. Assisted Middletown Fire Company on three building fires, one on Wincroft Drive, one on 364 Dutton Mill Road, and one on South Old Middletown Road. Assisted Upland Fire Company on two building fires, one at Crozier Hospital, <coughs> one on West 21st Street, and assisted Chester Township on a building fire on West Nate Ellis Drive. And we assisted Ridley Township Fire Department on second alarm building fire on Gorch Street. Our monthly training was SCBA recertification. We've been training uh, for about a month now over at the TD Bank in Brookhaven. We were given that building for training. We we're doing search and rescue operations, hose line advancement, victim rescue, all carried out this month in that building. Um, Additionally, we submitted a grant to Senator Kane's office for a community economic development grant. Hopefully we can get some uh, new battery operator rescue tools, the latest and greatest stuff that's out there on the market. And our EMS report for the month of January, 261 total alarms. We transported 151 people to the hospital, 100 calls in our, our local. 161 mutual aid, 159 of them calls were ALS, 102 were BLS, for a total of 290 ambulance calls for the month. That's just out of sight, but it's busy like the chief says. I don't know what's going on, that's crazy. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Madam Mayor. Yes, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I also had a couple um, thank you emails from people up at Hilltop for the great work that our chief and the officers are doing out there. I also had a thank you note for, from Benny Arsini, who was one of our veterans. We did a, a little drive-by um, happy birthday to him, and it was a last minute, and chief um, sent over two officers to give us a little escort. So he had a thank you note from Benny. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Er, Mr. Wills. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A copy of the solicitor's report is on file with the borough secretary's office in the event any members of the public would like to review it. I have several action items for borough council's consideration this evening. <coughs> all in the form of resolutions authorizing the release 
of certain escrow monies for the completion of public improvements by several developments here in Brookhaven Burr. The first three resolutions concerns the land development project at Zor Street. This is a fairly small two lot uh, subdivision and land development <coughs> involving uh, two uh, detached uh, single family dwellings. The first resolution for Burr Council's consideration is authorizing a second escrow release for the completion of public improvements for lot number one of Zor Street in the amount of $4,687.50. This escrow release has been recommended by the Burr engineer. And therefore, if it is the pleasure of Burr Council, a motion would be in order to adopt said resolution. Janice? So moved. Second, anyone? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. That's resolution 004. The second resolution for Burr Council's consideration authorizes a second escrow release for the completion of certain public improvements. Again, this is for lot number two at Zor Street. Again, the developers, Arbor Developers, and I am recommending an escrow release in the amount of $4,715 for lot number two. And again, this has also been recommended and reviewed by the Burr engineer. And therefore, if it is the pleasure of Burr Council, a motion would be in order to adopt said resolution. Ms. So, Wiki? So moved. Second? Second. Anyone? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Very well. Resolution 005. Thank you. Third resolution, again, concerns an authorization to release certain escrow monies for the completion of public improvements. Again, on behalf of this particular development known as Arbor Developers, with this particular escrow release, there have been certain public improvements completed with regard to the extension and the improvement of Zor Street. Zor Street is being extended approximately 100 additional feet. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the authorization is to release the sum of $10,120, again, to Arbor Developers, for the partial extension and completion of public improvements associated with Zor Street. And so, if it is the pleasure of Borough Council, again, a motion would be in order to adopt said resolution. So moved. Second, anyone? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Resolution 006. Aye. Very well. The final resolution concerns the completion of public improvements by Pando Property Group. They, of course, are the developer for the seven lot subdivision. Again, this is seven single family homes off of uh, East Brookhaven uh, or West Brookhaven Road. Uh, at this time, I'm asking for a motion to release the sum of $8,829.75 to Pando Property Group. Again, that is for the uh, completion, again, of certain public improvements. Again, that amount has been reviewed and recommended uh, by the Burr engineer. And therefore, if it is the pleasure of Burr Council, a motion would be in order to adopt said resolution. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Resolution 007. Mm -hmm. and with that, Mr. President, I can report general progress. Thank you, Mr. Wills. Mr. Catania, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I submitted my written report, a few things for council to consider. Uh, once again, the Brookhaven Glen development will need to uh, assign a street name designation. <coughs> Does that have to be done by motion, Mr. Wills? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we, I'll entertain a motion to name the street after uh, Nancy Harvin. I believe we agreed on Harvin Way. Who wants the motion? I'll make the motion. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? Aye. Motion carries. I do not have a bio, but uh, a brief bio. We'll have a bio for next meeting. Uh, Mrs. Harvin was the first woman on council. 
And that's all I have, unfortunately. The Oracle Committee will take care of that. And, and the correct spelling of Harvin is H A R V I N. I N, yes, is it is. Correct? Harvin Way. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> you have your authorization, Mr. Catania. Harvin Way is now the <clears throat> adopted street. We'll move forward with that. All right, the 2022 Street Resurfacing Program will seek authorization to bid that project. Subject to final uh, street list. Who wants it? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Okay, thank you. This is the 2022-23 winter road salt contract. This is for next winter. The authorization to participate in the CoStars contract. Who wants the motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Edgemont Avenue Sanitary Sewer seeking authorization to, for a bid to for video inspection services. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed questions? Motion carries. The Mariner East grant, the borough received some funding for <clears throat> the Mariner East penalty. We have authorization to bid a project for stormwater quality facilities at various locations throughout the borough. Who wants the motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or questions? Motion carries. And finally, the public works brought to our attention the uh, break in the sanitary sewer pipe at 3435 Commerce Avenue. We're going to seek authorization to repair that sanitary sewer. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed questions? What was that address? 3435 Motion Commerce carries. Right. As the burg it's the freezing temperatures and then the falling temperatures. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, yep, unfortunately, we will uh, probably uh, continue to uh, get several other uh, always sewer breakers. <clears throat> That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have a few items. Uh, first, I need a motion to approve the, approve the January 10, 2022 <coughs> council meeting minutes. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Questions? Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the January 24, 2022 council workshop minutes. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Questions? No. Motion carries. Executive session to announce. We held an executive session yesterday, Sunday, February 6th at 12 p.m. in the council chamber to discuss police personnel matters. Also, I'm reforming the Hero Banner Committee, which broke off, or which was uh, merged, I should say, with the Veterans Committee. It wasn't effective enough, so we're breaking back off to where we were and forming the Hero Banner Committee. I will have the dates for Mr. Wilworth to advertise. It'll likely be quarterly meetings. And the two council reps on the committee will be myself and Mrs. Heller. I will announce all of the members by the March meeting. I have uh, Matt Koppel's codes enforcement report for the month of January. 51 warnings or 51 total actions were taken. 41 were letters, 10 citations, half were snow removal violations. And as you probably saw on Facebook, we reopened the Municipal Center for hall rentals due to the extraordinary low or extraordinarily decline in COVID numbers. We, we saw it between one and 200 daily county cases. We're now sub 100 over the last couple of days. So that is good. I also want to reiterate what everyone else is saying. I received 20 plus emails, calls texts and Facebook messages from Hilltop residents and a few that did not reside in Hilltop for the recent police action in Hilltop. That unit and several other units have been uh, sort of neglected, as we know, and uh, fantastic, fantastic work. Can't say it enough. I really can't. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, police, to all the officers. It's incredible work. That's all I have for tonight. Ms. Sawicki. Thank you. The um, finance report for February, we do have bills to pay. And for a general fund, it's $47,369.88. The sewer fund is $17,177.25 for a total of $64,547.13. So I'm making the motion to pay the bills for February. Who wants a second? A second. 
<coughs> oh, oh, you guys need a Jeopardy bus. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions or any opposed? Motion carries. I don't have anything else, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sawicki. Mrs. Fuchs. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so the Ordinance Committee did not meet last month, and we're probably not going to meet this month uh, unless someone has something we, that they would like us to discuss. So if you do, please let me know. Big news for me is that our website is up and running. We realize that there are some iPhones that unfortunately are unable to access the site, and our website company is unable to figure out why at this time, but they're still looking at it. So please, if you have an iPhone and you cannot access the site, use your laptop, desktop, or tablet um, until we get this figured out. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please go to www.brookhavenborough.com and select contact us and then select website feedback. We will get that. And we will take a look at what you have to say and we will make those changes. I so do have a request you. from the tax collector to add a uh, section for the tax collector. Okay, great. Apparently he did not email you as he told me because you're apparently unaware, so. No, I didn't know that. We will definitely look at that. Our Shred and Electronics event will be held on Saturday, April 9th at Coburn Elementary School from 9 a.m. until noon. Anything with a cord is accepted. For shredding, please remove binder clips and anything that has metal on it. Uh, that will break the shredder in the truck. And please, no plastic bags. Um, and we also request that you do not combine electronics and the shredding together in a bag. We've had that happen a couple times and uh, the shredder almost broke because of it. So please, separate those two out. Rec Board News, uh, they met on Thursday, January 27th. We have a couple events coming up. Um, the first one is going to be on April 16th. It's going to be our Easter egg hunt. As of now, we're not sure uh, what it's going to be, if it's going to be a hunt or if it's going to be the bags. We're, we're weighing that out still. Um, pictures with the bunny will be at 11 o'clock, and then the event will begin at noon. Basketball is still in session. Baseball and softball registrations are happening now. Please visit their website to register. And we have a new event coming up that we're very, very excited about. It's a chili cook-off. It's gonna be held on Memorial Day weekend. Um, it, we're still in the beginning stages of it, so please um, <clears throat> follow us for details. Well, as we know them, we'll make sure we share them with everyone. So that potentially could be a very big event. And like I said, we're excited. The borough has not had anything like that before. So stay tuned. That's all my report. Thank you, Mrs. Fuchs. Mr. Vasquez has, is excused. Mr. Pappas, sir. Uh, very short. <clears throat> Excuse me. The workplace safety meeting uh, was held in January. I'm pleased to report that no employees were injured during the month. There were no uh, borough vehicles involved in any type of accidents. And our COVID supplies for the uh, borough employees, uh, including the masks, the disinfectants, uh, disinfectant sprays, and hand sanitizer are plentiful, even though the rates are going down. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Heller. So the parade committee will not be meeting this Wednesday. Uh, they will be meeting next month. As for the March meeting, they'll also be giving the uh, awards out to the parade for all the participants. Um, so stay tuned for the parade committee date on that. Uh, the police committee met on Thursday, January 6th at 6 p.m. to discuss police matters. Um, Unfortunately, the Town Watch Spaghetti Dinner that's scheduled for Sunday, February 20th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. has been canceled. Um, I guess the decision was made because it wasn't sure what COVID would look like, so it has been canceled for this year again. Um, I need to make a motion to waive the rental fee for the Sun Valley Class of 2022 After Prom ping Bingo fundraiser um, that's going to be held in the gym on Friday, April 8th, 2022. So moved. Who wants the second? I'll second. Well, Janice that. can take the second. Mrs. Hiller actually had that's the motion. Fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions or opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, at our March Council meeting, uh, we will be entertaining a resolution to hire an additional full time officer due to uh, police leadership requests and staffing shortages. So we will be um, making that request in March at the March meeting. We need to make motion. Well, March will be the conditional officer. We, yes. we don't need a motion tonight, Janice. All right. Okay. Am I, am I not mistaken? No, that is correct. Yeah. We, we, we will have a formal resolution 
for bar that's councils for a conditional offer in the March meeting. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And the last piece of information that I have is um, making a motion to purchase the live scan fingerprinting system for our police department um, at a $35,000 upfront cost with a $11,000 yearly cost. I have a feeling Janice wants that second. Mm -mm. Second, that's fine. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or questions? Motion carries. Great tool for the police department. Yes, Money well spent. Yes, it is. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Mrs. Heller. Mr. Gilroy, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I just have uh, two items here. Uh, the Technology Committee meeting will be held Thursday, February 10th, 7 p.m. The topic is adding live stream to our monthly council meetings. And secondly, the Historical Committee meeting will be uh, held Wednesday, February 16th, 7 p.m. We will have a special guest from Parkside Council joining us. Mr. Costigan, would it be? Yes, that's correct. And uh, that will be in my report. Thank you, sir. Mr. Leslie, sir. Uh, just a couple things here. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we have some inspections are still pending out here. We got 3412 Edgemont Avenue, Bay Nails, 4750 Edgemont Avenue, that's Chili's, Save a Lot, 3409 Edgemont. Green Estates is coming along. They're getting ready, almost ready for the hydro test for the sprinklers over there. Uh, the dentist office at 4 West Brookhaven Road, we're uh, on those people also. Carmen's 4233 Edgemont Avenue. Uh, and we all see that Coco's is kind of under construction over there. That's 4619 Edgemont. They took the rest of the roof off. They have the walls are supported. Uh, 3413 Janie Avenue, Mrs. Uh, Hill. They're almost ready to move back in. Okay. Contractor is uh, working over there diligently to get those people back in their house. It's been what, eight, nine months now. Uh, 4943 DeMayo Drive, uh, the Maskeys, they're still a ways out as we see. They're putting a big addition on the back. The weather's kind of holding them up right now with the contractors to get in there to start framing. Lincoln Drive, that house fire over there, they're still under construction with that garage fire. I reach out to these people all the time, you know, and uh, Mary over on Chandler, she's, she's 18 months away. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, I already mentioned Green Estates. Uh, the Lowe's, the reset over at Lowe's, I've been there half a dozen times now. Uh, they're doing most of the work at nighttime. 80% of that work's getting done at night, and then they're stocking in the daytime. The shelves, it's pretty cool the way they move those racks. They slide the whole rack out at one time. Been up there a couple times at night watching that. Uh, they assured me once those sprinklers get shut down, they will have a fire watch roaming that store when those sprinklers are shut down, walk in the property. Uh -huh. Okay, that's an indoor lumber yard, we know that. Uh, family Promise, do you want me to speak about that? Go ahead, sir. Family Promise, I reached out to those, those people over there. They're renting directly from charity. The board runs the bargain basement. They're only open about eight hours a month. Uh, they are looking for donations. Upland did give a donation. They're looking for money for their operating cost. There's eight adults in there and 16 children. They're all vaccinated. No one has ever had COVID there, so they told me. Uh, they do the temperature checks. The paperwork they fill out every day, uh, seven or eight days. At the most, they have 14 people there at the most at uh, Family Promise. And that's the end of my report there, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gavin is not present. Oh, I got one more thing. Go ahead. Sorry about that. I brought this. We've had a couple, couple calls on these, these, uh, these lights right here. Mm -hmm. They get really hot. Compact fluorescence. Since yeah, the camera can't to pick be, it up. Yes. They get very hot. The other night we had another call. We've been out on five or six calls with these lights. If you smell something burning, please call the fire department. I say this every month, month after month. Don't hesitate. Dial 911. Don't be embarrassed. Don't matter what your neighbors say. Yeah, there's going to be 20 fire trucks there, but play it safe. These things get really hot. Call have the they fire cause, department. Have, have they caused fires? There has no fires caused by this yet, but you in will get in the borough, something in, in, in the burning burning burning. in your bedroom or wherever you have this light. So please call 911. 
But should people not buy them? I didn't say that. Well, it, it, uh, yeah, I'll say they shouldn't buy them because they're useless with LED technology. So. Correct. They just get really hot and they put yeah. off an odor that something's burning. Kind of yeah. drives us nuts a little bit. Okay. Until yeah. we find it. But LED, the LED tech is far better. It, it's um, as far as cost savings. The other night there were 20 minutes before they called the fire department. Oh, wow. 20 minutes they told me. I don't like to hear that. Thank you. Thank Charles, you, I have a question for you. Do you know um, if there's any businesses that are slated to go into Carmen's yet? Since they're very close to finishing. Over there. Three, I smoke, not, three smoke shops. Just don't tell us that. Well, they got to go, <laughs> go to uh, zoning first, I believe. Yeah. So once it comes to zoning, then the inspectors will get it. We'll go down there and take a look. Right. Other than that, no. I don't know the names of any properties or Thank people you. going in there yet. It's got to get approved by zoning. I heard the same thing you heard, so. Of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. As I said, Mr. Gavin is not present. It brings us to the second public discussion session. Is there anyone that would like to speak for public discussion? If so, approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Tom, come limping on up. Tom Dykes, 305 West Park Road. Uh, first question is on what you call it, the 315 at Brookhaven Road? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The park. Um, the original idea for that was that the developer was going to put in corner markings with, with bushes. Is that still on the plan for being done? It was never the plan. Yeah, it was to put it in. It wasn't. Put in some sort I of was on council when we approved it. Council's going to do. Are we getting? We have a pico bit. A pico. I do recall what Mr. Dykes says is accurate. About, yeah. about the it could be me. We have yeah, the original council who approved it did, never had that. Right, let's not get this throwdown. We're not worrying about that. The second question is this: the extra strip of land. Have we gotten anywhere on that with that yet? It's still in the developer's uh, court. Okay. Uh, and again, that's something he's going to have to go back with the title company and his attorney if necessary. Because I, I do know that some of the neighbor, a couple of the neighbors are taking care of shoveling snow and cutting back bushes and taking care of grass. If anything happens to them, it's on the borough. So we need to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, number two, with the snowstorm, um, I realize Brookhaven Road is a state road and the state's required to plow our roads. However, this year, this last storm, they only did from white line to white line. So those houses that do not have sidewalks, there was no place for people to walk if they had to walk, other than walking in the street. We can pass it along to PennDOT, but in our experience, it's PennDOT. So. I, and that's with that, I understand that. The question, I guess, is I know it was a Brookhaven ordinance years ago, and the council kept passing it over and passing it over and passing it over and letting people get by with not putting sidewalks in with us. We houses. should enforce that upon the transfer of mm -hmm. a property. Correct. That ordinance does still exist. Is anyone <laughs> correct? I'm pretty sure it does. Okay. The, the, wor the worst part is the. I don't recall it ever being enforced. It never was. They always got a, they always got an exception for it. Sure. Um, and it was interesting because I know my parents when the my parents were there when the thing went in, the state told us we had to do it, and people just refused to do it and mm -hmm. they never got penalized for it. So it's like you look at Shepherd Street as <laughs> one example. I believe it. More than half of it does not have sidewalk. Plenty of those properties have transferred. Right. Well, there's not a whole lot of room in there either. Right. But um, so just ordinance it, it, is ordinance. Cable Road, especially, ex is a um, safety issue, especially if. Well, I mean, it, any speed. street is a safety yeah, issue. But but yeah, the speed limit. The yeah. Come in, you know, because I usually go out and I shovel my drive. I shovel the road in front of my driveway, so when the plow comes, it doesn't block my driveway. Mm -hmm. So I kind of angle it over, um, and nothing happened. It was just like, okay, this is weird. Does that apply to commercial <laughs> properties? It has to, right? I mean, honestly, there should be one up Dutton Mill in front of the CWA property, if you ask me. You, you risk your life walking up Dutton Mill. But that one's, that one's been there for 100 years. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's not going to be, it's, it, that's going to, it's going to change hands in some form yes. within the next few years, as soon as the and illegal I, hostile takeover is settled. I, I was walk, out walking a couple days after the snowstorm, and there were a couple of houses on Brookhaven Road and on <coughs> Chandler Drive, or Ch Chandler and Mount Vernon that were not shoveled. We have 23 <coughs> warnings written okay. just to residences alone, and I believe 15 businesses were cited. We do give the residents a warning. Mm -hmm. we, don't to, we don't want to kill our people. 
Oh, I know. We're also talking about, for seniors and anyone disabled, a shoveling program. I didn't want to. Lord knows how we'll get that to work. We'll have to pay, we'll probably have to pay for it, 15, 16 bucks an hour. But um, anyway, so it was. We, we council, council mentioned that, and we will be talking about that. It it's too late to, to install this year, so we, oh, yeah. it will be for next year. But I, th I definitely think we need to try and go back and re look, re revisit that ordinance about sidewalks. Well, it's not a matter of revisiting. It's a matter of enforcing, enforcing an existing ordinance. I, I could not possibly agree anymore with you. Yes. Because uh, Brookhaven Road, Chandler, Dutton Mill is a big one, too. Sure, I don't have one. Yeah. All right. What are you saying? Thank you. <laughs> you looked at me. <laughs> have a good night, Tom. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak for public discussion? Public discussion going once, going twice. The second public discussion session is closed. Council, anything else? Yes, I have something. Mayor, go ahead. Um, Officer Johnson is in the back there, so let's give him a round of applause. He's still growing his beard, as you can tell. <laughs> Thank you for your hard work on the uh, Hope for Halley campaign. Yeah. Great work, Officer Johnson. <laughs> Mr. Catania, Mr. Wills, since the council has nothing else? Nothing on my behalf. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. So moved. Second. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. I like this